Hey guys, this is Danny with Patrick Adair Supplies here for the July subscription box. This one is the Crystal Mountain. So we're going to be trying our best to create mountains within our ring. It's such a grand idea, like something so large fitting into something so small that I was really intrigued with how we could pull this off. I think we did an all right job. I think we pulled off the, the look that we were hoping for and managed to create mountains within our, our eight millimeter ring blank. So I'm really excited about this. So this month's ring includes a couple things. First, we have our bright sapphire color pigment, which is just a really nice vibrant blue. It's, it's just a basic blue, but it's a really nice color. I love to work with this one. I'm never disappointed by the color. And then we have our violet purple color pigment as well. This is another one that's just kind of your basic purple color, but it's a really vibrant, clean purple. Um, it's one that really maintains its vibrancy no matter how much glow powder you put in I've found that it can stay really nice and purple So it's a fun one to work with for that reason next we have our inlay materials this month We're going to be working with Deep space blue opal, which is just a really nice blue opal But it has a lot of purples and greens and blues within it So when it catches the light it just gives off a lot of different refractions Different shades of these colors and it's a really cool one to look at because of the many different colors within it It's not just blue. It has a lot of Nuance to it and it's it's a cool. It's a cool opal then we have our Glacier White Opal, which is just a really kind of muted white. It has a really, um, it gives off a very blue color to it. So combined with the purples and the blue of our daytime colors, along with the Deep Space Blue Opal, it's gonna give us a little bit of contrast between them, add a little bit of white, a little bit of lightness to our ring, but it's gonna help kind of tie it all together by having a similar color palette as the other opals and color pigments. And then we have our blue glow powder. I'm a fan of blue and it glows really nicely. It's one of our brighter glow colors. So I love the combo of these three and it'll be really nice looking. First step today is to mix our glow powder and our color pigment. I always do this by adding one to two scoops with my scoopula of the color pigment, and then I do about a third of the vial worth of glow powder. Sometimes I'll add a little bit more of the glow powder depending on the consistency I'm hoping for. The more glow powder you add to the pigment, it mutes the color a little bit, but it will help, it will help it absorb into the CA later on. A lot of the times the color pigment alone doesn't, doesn't uh, absorb the CA adhesive very well. So the more glow powder you add, the better it absorbs, but you don't get quite as vibrant of a color. Next, we went ahead and mixed our violet with our blue glow powder as well. Same thing here, just one or two scoops of the color pigment, fill about a third of the vial with glow powder, and then thoroughly shake it. This month's freebie is a gem scooper. I'm really excited to finally be able to offer this to you guys. It's something that we've seen people ask for in the comments of a lot of videos. It's just a little tray where I dump the opals or different mixes that I'm trying to make so that I have a nice easy spot so that I can see all of my materials and then an easy way to pour it into the vials that I'm working with. So I'm really excited for you guys to get to work with it. It just makes life a little bit easier to be able to mix all of your opals and inlay materials together in one spot and have it be convenient enough to pour into your vials. So I'm excited for you guys to finally have some. All right, next up, we're on to our inlay process. This ring is a relatively simple ring, but since we're going for the mountainous look inside of our ring, what I did was I took some of my thick glue and I was just adding it onto like a little section of the ring just off to one side so that I could pour the opal onto it and kind of push them to a side. It creates a really interesting effect when you do it this way because you only will have opal in a couple areas but they'll be really condensed so you'll be able to create these kind of um, mountainous terrains where it's kind of different layers of opal some of it's going to be really pointy and spiky, some of it more rounded. So you're going to just have an interesting look where your opal is just pushed off to one side. 
And then I really like the look of having just a thin layer of the color pigment around these groupings of opal. So what I did is I poured a little bit of our purple blue mix onto the opal to lock them into place after I'm happy with how they're placed. So I do this to just ensure that they won't move while I go all the way around the ring placing the opals. Once we've gone around the ring and I've added enough of the opal mixture, I'm gonna go ahead and use my medium C adhesive now. And I just go grouping by grouping and I just add little dabs of the medium C A to cover any uncovered faces of the opal. After the medium C A adhesive, I'm gonna go ahead and pour more of our color pigment mixture on top just to create a nice layer of purple surrounding the opal. We're doing this just to encapsulate it, kind of just separate it from the blue. It creates a really interesting effect to have the opals grouped together, then a little bit of purple, and then blue. It almost reminds me of like a sunset setting behind the mountains. Somewhat, as someone who grew up in Utah, admiring the mountains every day and watching the sunset, you really do get some interesting colors that happen when the sun is setting behind it. You'll get some really nice vibrant purples and pinks and blues, and then you'll have it contrasting against the darker sky. So that's, that's kind of what we were going for here, is to have it look like there's the purple kind of peeking out from behind the mountain, just contrasting with the blue of the sky. After we've filled it all the way up, we're gonna go ahead and hit it with our accelerator just to start the curing process. You could leave it be, just let it spin for a little while or let it sit, but I like to use the accelerator just because I'm not a very patient person. I like to just finish the ring as soon as I can so I can see what my creation looks like. So I hit it with accelerator, let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes, and then we come back for our finishing steps. Once I've gone all the way around the ring with the purple again, now we're gonna take our our super thin C adhesive and I'm gonna dab the whole ring with a little bit just to wet everything down and allow the next layer to stick to the ring. So after we've gone around with super thin C adhesive, I'm gonna use the blue color mixture and we're just gonna pour it on top of the ring. For this part, it is important to go slowly and do small layers. If you go too fast, the blue won't maintain an even color as you finish it. For whatever reason, if you do too much C adhesive here or too large of layers, if you, if you don't allow each layer to be small and fully saturated, you'll create these light spots in the surface of your ring later. So I just make sure to go really slow. I add a little bit of super thin C adhesive just to wet down that last layer a little bit, add a little bit more color pigment, and then I add more super thin. Just repeating that until I've filled the, the entire ring blank until it's up above the lip of the inlay channel. The finishing process on this ring is super simple. We're just gonna take our Dremel with 80 grit Dremel pieces on it. You could use a little bit higher grit, like 120 or 240, but I just really like the 80 grit just because it just sands straight through things. Um, you do have to be careful when you're using this low of a grit 
because it can damage your ring blanks if you're not extremely careful. So when I'm dremeling, I make sure not to put too much pressure on it once I've hit the ring blank and I don't stay in one area for too long because that can cause scratching, especially on some softer materials like titanium and cobalt. And tungsten can have some scratches. It's extremely scratch resistant, but you could damage it with your Dremel if you're not careful. After we've dremeled everything flush, I'll take a little bit of my 220 grit sandpaper and we're just gonna wet sand the exterior of the ring just to create a nice even surface, uncover any holes that we're hiding and just ensure that we're happy with the look of the ring before we completely lock it into place and finish it. After the 220 wet sand, I'll dry the ring off and I check for big air pockets. I, I check for holes where I can see the bottom of the ring blank. And with this one, I didn't really see any, so I just went ahead and did a layer of our super thin CA adhesive. I always do this layer pretty slowly just to ensure that I'm filling any holes or cracks. So I just went around and added droplets of our super thin CA adhesive and then began spinning the ring and I added a few more drops of the super thin CA adhesive. After you've added some super thin to fill the holes and cracks, go ahead and hit it with a little bit of accelerator. I like to hold it 8 to 12 inches away from my ring and just do like a quarter of a second spritz of the accelerator. Maybe do that twice and just let it spin until it fully cures. So sometimes this will take a minute or two, but the patience is worth it because it ensures that you won't have any discoloration or air bubbles or any weirdness popping up in your CA adhesive. Patience is key when you're curing CA adhesive, which is a conundrum for me because I am not a very patient person. That's why I have to use the accelerator. But if you hold it a little bit further away from your ring, you can cure it. You can cure it fast and still, and still have it cure without any imperfection. After the CA adhesive layer cures, we're going to go ahead, go ahead and just do our wet sanding finishing process. So I start with my 220 grit sandpaper, rinsing it off occasionally, and then I switch to 500, rinsing in between each step and every couple of seconds as I sand, just to ensure that I can have a nice even finish. Then I switch to 1000. After the 1000 grit sandpaper, I'll stop it dried off, look at the ring a little bit just to ensure that I sand it correctly, that there's not any imperfections on the surface of my ring that I, that I just finished, make sure that it's finished properly. Alright, after I finished sanding it, I went ahead and, and polished the ring up. For this one, I used our Step 2 Diamond Paste Polish. I really like to use diamond paste polish, just especially when I'm working with tungsten. I feel like it does a really good job of bringing all of the shine back to my ring. Sometimes when you're, sometimes when you're working with tungsten, you can scratch it up a little bit, just depending on how rough you were with the sanding. And I feel like the diamond paste polish really helps bring back that full shine. So I always like to use that when I'm working with tungsten. All right guys, I'm really happy with how this ring turned out. I really love the look of the deep space opal with the glacier white opal, kind of creating these nice crystalline mountains. It, it reminds me a lot of watching the sunset over the mountains in the winter when the mountains are just so white that they really pick up the color of the sunset. A lot of the times they'll look really purple and pink because of the way that the sun is reflecting off of the snow. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think that we really achieved the look of having these, rain, this, these mountain ranges within our ring blank. And I hope you guys enjoyed making this one as much as I did. It was fun to kind of go over a little bit of a different inlay technique using just the different layers of opal and then color pigment and then a different color pigment without having them bleed into each other a whole lot. I think it looks really good. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.